The Ranger originated in 1958 with the Edsel Ranger. The Ranger moniker served as a trim line for the mid to high level F series and Ford Bronco trucks from 1965 until 1981. In 1983, the Ford Ranger was born in North America. This generation of Ford Ranger was sold with a variety of engine choices starting in 2001, from a 2.3 liter four cylinder to a 2.5 four cylinder, then a 3 liter Vulcan V6, which is what this pickup truck has, then a 4 liter Cologne V6, and finally a 4 liter single overhead cam V6. You could opt for a 5-speed stick shift transmission, a 4-speed automatic, or a 5-speed automatic. The 4-speed automatic is relatively unreliable, and basically people on the forums agreed that it was not strong enough for the V6 especially. The stick shift had no major issues, although it was not one of the more precise stick shifts you find, say, in a Honda or a Toyota product. You know, basically the Ranger drives like a truck that's bigger than it is. This drives and feels about as nimble as an F-250 or an F-350. I think the F-150 drives a lot better than this, actually. There's, um, there's a little bit of initial turn-in. It feels relatively agile, but at, you know, lower speeds, there's... You know, anything less than like 60 miles an hour, this thing just feels like a bigger truck than it is, which is not a good thing in a small truck. <laughs> I mean, you want it to feel like, if it's small, it should feel small. It should feel relatively uh, lightweight, like it could handle, but I, it may, maybe it's just the tuning that Ford wanted to do with this particular pickup truck. They wanted to make it feel like it was bigger so that people that bought them maybe because they couldn't afford a bigger pickup, would still feel like, um, you know, like it's something more substantial. That, 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 that can be a design choice, but yeah. This thing just, it accelerates, it handles like a bigger truck. On the highway, the, uh, the cabin's relatively quiet. There's there's not a lot of wind buffeting, but you can, it's just a constant kind of drone. But it's not too bad in here. It's quieter than I expected it to be, being a truck. Turning 2500 at about 70 miles an hour. So, not too bad. You know, with the, all the negatives that I can say about the driving dynamics of this Ranger, it just works, and that sounds really cliche, but I don't know, older cars are just easy, um, or easier, I should say. I don't really necessarily think they're built better, but I mean, there's nothing on this thing that's going to go bad that you can't fix literally in your own garage. I've watched people drop transmissions from this thing, um, swap motors for a V8 motor. You can, you know, there's no lane departure camera systems. There's no blind spot monitoring. There's nothing like that. You have to drive it. You have to pay attention. But at the same time, it also means when something goes wrong, it's not going to cost you an arm and a leg or require you to go to a dealership only to uh, get help. So, um, and everything's just kind of where you expect it to be. Um, it's got a column shifter. There's no, you know, there's no push button, whatever. There's, you know, lights, switches are where you expect them. And, you know, anything in here, you can, you can either replace with something aftermarket really easily or find a replacement really easily. And, 
these are like ten dollars at a junkyard if you needed to go find one on the on the cheap or you can buy one for like 40 bucks on ebay so you know i like the simplicity of it everything is simple relatively robust in how well it's put together and there's a lot to be said for that and there's a reason why there are 500,000 of these still on the road. Ever since I bought this one, I'm just seeing them everywhere. Um, the 4-liter V6 is an excellent motor. The 3-liter V6 is an excellent motor. They all have their little quirks and little things, but generally they're not like life-ending problems like Ford's later 3.7 liter that had water pumps that are, you know, a water pump that's buried inside the motor that when it does go bad is completely you know, disabling and breaks your, your bank account to fix. Um, these, these engines were super simple, even the 2.3 liter. The only thing that I would say is probably not so great is these transmissions are not the strongest. Um, but I would say, generally speaking, transmissions are not that strong as soon as the fluid is not changed at regular intervals and that just means that you get friction material that builds up in the valve body uh, throughout the transmission and it starts to cause problems and if on any car if you don't change the transmission fluid regularly you're gonna have problems with it it's not gonna it's not gonna be a reliable transmission for you so there may be something to that um, maybe they aren't that strong but simplicity is really nice in an older car. So is the Ford Ranger garbage or great? I'd say it's great, mainly because this truck has a heritage behind it. It has been around forever. It has been the go-to trade truck uh, for air conditioning guys, for plumbers, carpenters, for farmers, for ranchers. It is a great value. It does everything you need it to do. It does it without a lot of fuss. Sure, it's going to have little things that will go wrong on it after a long time of ownership, but it's simple to work on. It's simple to operate. It's very inexpensive to purchase and Everybody knows how to fix it. If you need to take it to someone, you can. You can get parts for it anywhere. And because of that, there's a tremendous value in this pickup truck. It doesn't have the resale value that the Toyota would have, but it has usability value. It's going to serve you very well if you take care of it. So I would recommend it. Take a look at the Ford Ranger. If you're looking at a two-wheel drive Tacoma, if you're looking at um, something that you're going to drive into the ground, you may want to look at the Ford. <laughs>